Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I plan on checking in on some African Nightcrawler systems. Not like last time. A week ago when we came in here last time we fed all my Nightcrawler systems. But on this go around we're leaving out the newer ones. The ones that are right here and right there. I, I My thinking with that was that since they're newer systems they're still pretty much loaded with tons of bedding. And besides that we gave each system here a little bit more than what the other African Nightcrawler systems got. Each of these got an avocado last time, which was above and beyond what was fed to the other African Nightcrawler systems. The other African Nightcrawler systems are down here on the floor, side by side. And those are the ones that I wanted to check in on today. They're much, much older. These things are 265 days of age, fed 24 times. I guess my concern with these was the dampness. It seemed to me like there was way too much moisture going on. And that's the reason the plastics were um, sort of put back on in a way that they didn't go all the, all the way from edge to edge. They were put on in a deliberate way to allow for the system to air out a little bit. But even before heading into those systems to give them some food, I feel like I need to bring a closure to this. So this has been this way the way you see it here for three weeks now what I've got going on in there is some bait stations attempting to see if I can round up any possible babies that may have um, possibly hatched from some cocoons that may have possibly been left behind by the worms that used to live in here <laughs> It's kind of a long shot I didn't know what to expect but I figured there's been plenty of time permitted for any of that sort of activity to play out and besides that, I need the systems, I need the containers, so and I need the castings. So I'll be emptying some of these systems out, but before doing so, I want to see if I can haul out any babies from there. So we're going to get to work. Let's get these systems up on the bench and start with this one. The only thing to be done down here in this um, sort of nursery bin, if you will, is to extract these bait boxes. That's the reason I've got this piece of clear plastic container here to uh, to put the contents of these boxes into. And I really don't know what to expect. I didn't really have high hopes for this. I'd never spotted many worms. And I sure hope I didn't allow too much time where things might have dried out a bit. So let's just... Oh. Okay, we got at least one worm. <laughs> it does look like a juvenile, so it could have been born recently. I mean, well prior to me putting those bait boxes out, I um, I had been just letting the system sit around, thinking that maybe I was going to start treating it as a cocoon nursery. I spotted another worm over here. This little guy looks a little bit bigger. Might have just been a straggler left behind during previous haul outs. And here's this other little guy. Um, before we, we get too many that we miss just by not paying attention, I'm just going to focus a little bit here on checking out this more damp material situated around where the bait boxes had been placed. Here's another pretty small one. I, uh, I would have to assume that that's where the worms would be because as you work your way to the outer edges, things are drier out here. But you know what, let's test that theory really quick. Out here in the outer edges, it's fair to expect that there's not going to be much worm traffic. So, you know, besides the food that's in these bait boxes, there was the moisture as well. And the plastic was sort of forcing recirculation of the moisture in here only around the center area, leaving the outskirts to ventilate and dry to the air. So we've so far spotted a handful of worms. How effective my bait stations were in terms of luring worms to come be in them and stay in them is, um, I guess, my big question. Curious to see what we see when we pop out the contents of those bait boxes. So yeah, things are nice and moist down here. And that's where you would expect to find worms. So I guess I'll just sort of sweep through this leading edge at this point since we've 
examined pretty much everything on this side, I believe. Even out to the edges, maybe over here too. We could just take a quick peek just to validate our theory. And so far, I'm feeling like about half of what's in this box I could now treat as sort of being um, officially depopulated <laughs> and classified as castings only. Let's just make a kind of completion of our sweep here just so we don't leave any one behind so you know what I could sit here doing this all day I believe and I'd probably be finding worms all day if I did but the amount of worms we end up finding is um, just not worth the effort or time I believe so I think we gave a, a good college try at that nope. I think we can put this right back up on the shelf and the next thing I'll be doing is emptying it into some sort of a storage container or who knows possibly directly into the garden so that's it it's official the system is now really doing nothing more than storing castings so for now I'm gonna leave these on here but this is now a done system let's get the um let's get the other bins out here and take care of getting them fit too whoopsie let's see if we can get one more use out of this this will be the final use, so not another use besides this one. <laughs> so let's see if we can just get to the finish line on today's job to, to get this finished and then hopefully have a glove that's still sort of doing its job before we finish here. There's not a whole lot to be done other than drop in today's food. And today's food is meant to be a type of food that doesn't bring a whole lot of moisture with it. Lots of, lots of fruits, vegetables, Especially the way I deliver the foods, um, frozen and then they thaw and then they, as they're melting, they kick off a lot of their moisture content. Here, I don't think we're gonna, you know, get a lot of moisture out of that food product. So a lot of times when I want to go with a minimal moisture content feeding, I'll use something like the coffee. And then I could even add some of my dry worm chow to it. These um, these pieces of paper towel. They're going to go in as bedding, and I've even got a few other pieces of paper towel here that's also going to go in as bedding Oops. when we reset the feeding zone and drop in their coffee portion for today. And maybe a little worm chow just to spice up the meal. And then afterwards we're going to cover up, no longer with those plastic coverings, I made a few replacement newspaper coverings, sort of folded to fit nicely pretty snugly around the edges and leave it at just that and then well after we fed and before we cover up we're going to drop in whatever baby worms that we were able to round up out of those nurseries so we're already starting to see some signs of the mold that's growing on the bread that we fed last time each system was given um a hard, a hard roll a slice of bread and uh, a lot of times the bread just gets moldy so well, I'm going to be digging in here and my hands are going to get soiled, no big deal. I figured before we get to work on resetting the feeding zone and giving them their portion for the day, we would try to till up the outskirts of each bin to loosen up the material a little bit, a little bit of airflow in there. See, just the way this stuff is in these huge clumps is not much to my liking and I blame excess moisture for that. And ultimately, I can't blame anyone but myself for allowing it to get that way. I think a lot of people will sometimes even say that castings in a very old bin, if you consider 265-day-old bin old, um, could just be that the, the castings are really heavily worked already. Maybe there's like a, maybe there's just a whole bunch of, I guess what people describe as worm pee <laughs> in the system. So... Oh, here I go again. I'm, I usually try to at least do things in a sort of felt swoop across both bins so it feels like we're working on one big system rather than two medium sized systems. But since we forgot to do the opening up of this far edge before covering up, I'm just getting caught up at this point. You see how much nicer this stuff is? It's still clumpy, but definitely breaks apart a lot more readily than what's in the other container. In fact, here I almost wonder if it would be better off just to stick with plastic coverings because allowing this stuff to dry out any further might not be necessary. That might be the way we 
end up playing it here. So, all right, we got one more truck chance to get this right. So, when I'm working on these side by side bins, I've been trying to get my mind to forget the fact that it's two systems and forget about that divider in between the two systems and just kind of continue with whatever I'm working on and just transfer that thinking right over into the neighboring bin. I guess there's a, a pretty good advantage to doing it that way because I can feel right away moisture content in the material and how different it is, how easily this stuff allows my fingers to penetrate and you know till through the material versus here where it takes more effort and then just how the stuff feels obviously feels more damp over here and I can feel more and more of it <laughs> as time goes on as this poor glove continues to deteriorate and then as we already spotted earlier just the clumping nature of it so visually you can clearly see how this stuff is holding together a lot more than um, you might want it to. So hopefully by airing things out a little bit we're introducing little air pockets and an ability for this stuff to loosen up a little bit. But I think we're at that point where we can open up where we last fed seven days ago, see if there's any leftovers besides that little sneak preview of mold that we spotted on one of those pieces of bread. But regardless of whether there's leftovers or not, they're getting this coffee I bought down for them. So let's get them hooked up with their food. Wow, okay. We've definitely got nice turnout down here near the middle of the, the system. Lots and lots of worms occupying the feeding area. We, and I can see some dust. Well, it's not dust, it's mold. <laughs> and what have we here? Do not know. Grapes? Looks like grapes. <laughs> How quickly we forget. Wow. Lots and lots of worms down here. You know what? Before we forget to do our felt swoop approach here, let's just continue on with that same thinking here to excavate through and see how they're doing on the um, last feeding they got and whether that last feeding was grapes or not I don't know perhaps those grapes go back even further now chances are that they're part of the last feeding here I'm starting to see more moldy bread good piece of it too right there <laughs> and you know what we've got lots and lots of worms hanging out here now on the surface all over the place why don't we give these little guys a moment to settle down and then we can bring in their coffee get this disruption completed. It's so funny, I could feel something here every time, and I thought it was just a little piece of rubber hitting my hand. Then I looked down and I noticed there was a little worm hanging out, tickling my hand, and then I, I spotted this other little hitchhiker on my glove too. And at this point, unless there are more under the glove and on my hand, <laughs> I think we've got them all. Sometimes I worry that one of these little guys is going to just drop off my glove and then they'll be in a bad place. So. It does seem like these grapes that I um, fed last time, some of them are really holding up good and possibly just haven't even had their skin breached yet. So a little something I do sometimes if I can is try to burst grapes. When they were first added, they were frozen and they couldn't have been popped at that time. So this was our first opportunity here to help the skin of the grapes get breached so that the worms can access the insides get to all that juicy delicious goodness and we probably missed a few so we'll probably get back here next time and find some more grapes that just hadn't been um, opened up yet so I think it's time to give them their food and 
Last time we added a bunch of um, shredded paper and cardboard. My, my prepared bedding mix was what we used last time. And uh, today I had a bunch of paper towels and napkins still floating around that I wanted to get rid of. So I figured uh, let's just use that as the bedding for today's feeding. That piece of bread, I don't want to send mold spores into the air too much. So every time I handle that or right there when I broke it, I'm sure I sent a whole bunch of that stuff in the air. So <laughs> I'm not sure how good that is. Whatever. I'm usually not overly careful, but there are certain things you do want to avoid breathing in or stuff like that. You know, in the worm farming game, it's usually the it's usually the pulverized eggshell that people warn against breathing in when that stuff turns to dust because that stuff could mess with your well-being. So now we've so far managed to find a good number of leftover food items that I just wanted to return back down into the feeding area instead of leaving them out here on the surface to attract insects. We're no longer covering up with plastic here. We're going to be covering with paper only, allowing for more of the aroma and scent of the delicious food to waft out into the air and potentially draw, attract, who knows, um, little visitor creatures, which I'd prefer not to see too much of if possible. <laughs> Kind of hiding the fact that there's all kinds of yummy goodies in these boxes but it's for the worms it's not for some sort of curious insects to come in and make a home and make a family and next thing you know you got tons of insects so in with the uh food and oh i just noticed that over here too oops we have a uh where did it go did i drop it in already another piece of bedding material a piece of used paper towel or napkin or whatever that was. So the only thing we're going to do as far as using this coffee filter is we're going to use it to replace um, what had been out here previously. Those pieces of paper that were resting right atop where we last fed. We're going to be upgrading to some real feeding zone indicators this time <laughs> with some coffee filters. Okay, so I'm spreading the uh, coffee out across all the foods and a lot of times I'll sprinkle some worm chow in to make the coffee a little bit more interesting rather than just sitting there as a big bland pile of boring monotonous food but I think the way we just added it blending it in with all the scraps of leftovers I think should be satisfactory so we'll just leave it be and before we uh, start to backfill the feeding area now I guess we can even put in this little sort of scent barrier keep the delicious smell of the feeding down low where the worms can sense it but any sort of passerby insects could not or hopefully don't and then we can get things back filled here it does seem like we've got a few pieces of leftover food here and there the grapes are easy to spot other things sort of blend in with the castings and we've definitely got a good number of worms hanging out <laughs> over here I'm sure we're probably going to see the same over here when we uh, go to return things to the feeding zone and get stuff covered up. All right, pretty level, pretty level. Looking good. Looks like we got ourselves another little hitchhiker, but in this case it's a pot worm. Yeah. Pot worms are not really what you're after, I guess, in your worm bins, but there's certainly no harm, and they're just another helper, uh, helper in the worm bin. So now, before we can start covering up, let's not forget the uh, remaining task at hand here, which is um, to get these little rounded up babies released into a new home. So I didn't really want to go through any sort of major fanfare here in terms of trying to estimate worm count or anything like that. I'm not interested in uh, revising the worm count estimates of these systems. 
over all the time that they've been in service, you know, who knows what could have happened in here. So even though we would have gotten a good look at the worms that we launched into here at the start, and we made estimates of how many worms populate the system at that time, um, you know, 265 days later, you would have to imagine that a lot has changed. Presumably, worms have been mating, increasing their numbers. So here, we're simply increasing by just a small little bit, adding a couple extra wormies to each box. And it's at this point we're actually commingling the worms that live in here now, which are the worms that I would trace back to the cocoons I received from Emily, the crazy worm lady. That's what occupies these two bins here. This was my best effort at getting over the um, getting the ANCs, the African nightcrawlers, out of their cocoons and raising them and keeping them isolated somewhat to the best of my ability, um, which is something I've always sort of called into question. So that leads me to very often question whether or not I've even got African nightcrawlers here or maybe other types of worms that have just sort of gotten mixed in with the crowd and <laughs> possibly even taken over at this point. So who knows? We've got a little bit more material in here which we can drop out, make sure we don't leave any baby worms behind. And they're puny, so it'll be easy to miss them. And at this point, checking my glove, because I don't think I'll be interacting with any worms anymore at this point. We're almost done. All we're going to do now is plop on the coffee filter, indicating to ourselves where we last fed, which was right down the middle. Not a big fancy feeding, but uh, I think there were some other ulterior motives to wanting to come in here. Number one was to get that uh, the, uh, the bin freed up and the bait boxes extracted so that I can put those bins to new uses. And then um, second of all was to do what we're doing right now, which is to swap out the plastic coverings for something that will hopefully allow for a little bit more airing out. And while I thought it might be beneficial in both systems to have a setup like that, um, just from having been in here, I do feel like coming back on uh, over here in this box with the plastic coverings is a, a prudent step because I don't think any further drying is required here. Stuff in here feels pretty good for that matter. It's really just the other box that I'd like to see um, reduce in its moisture content. And the other thing it was really clear too was when I lifted these boxes up to put them up here on the bench I did notice um, a pretty significant weight difference too you know just by the probably by the moisture content being the reason for this system here being so much heavier because it uh it is more damp and this plastic is not going back on but we'll keep it over here since it's part of this package of buddy bins or sister bins or whatever you want to call it. All right, everyone, that's it for our check-in with the African Nightcrawlers, and that's also it for this glove. <laughs> so I'll be making it into the trash, and it didn't do a very good job protecting me of protecting me from getting a, a filthy hand. But I also wanted to really quick, let me just say before I go, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.